highest rate. I think I might say they have the highest shooting rate uh, for Suffolk County. Um, and what I found was you had a, a, a nice little resource center, but it didn't have a lot of resources in it. Um, you had a nice youth center, um, but you didn't have the right person running it. And what you found with that is you had 30 people in the youth center, 30 kids see, being seen a month in the youth center, and you had 22 people seen a month in the, um, in the, in the resource center. So you have these small resources, but you also need more funding, right? But say, even with the funding you have, you have to do a mapping and an assessment and say, okay, we've given you funding, you know, what's the standard I'm gonna hold you to, right? And so once we uh, worked hard as a police department, frankly, to get rid of the person in the um, resource center and get rid of the person running the youth center, my apologies, but that's what we did. Even if I had to go behind the scenes and, and, um, and tell people, uh, wouldn't you like to have a, a better youth center? And then get 50 people to go agree with me, to go, what you think you should do about it? You know? <laughs> but the bottom line is, now you have over 300 people being seen a month in the resource center, and over 400 kids, or 500 kids, being seen in the youth center. And so once you get the, you, those things functioning well, right, the young people have something to do, places to go. You have um, champions like Dr. Allen over there in, in Amityville working, um, working with young people. Um, these are the things you can do. Uh, in addition, in that same neighborhood, you have a drop in violent crime by 82%, right? So you increase funding to a community, which they didn't, they didn't even need to increase the funding right away. But I want you to take this note away from me, right? Think about this. We spend $220,000 a year to send a 17-year-old, a younger upstate New York. Most resource centers don't get $200,000 a, a year. So you're gonna spend $220,000 a year to put a kid upstate, right? And you don't give $200,000 for a youth center um, to be successful. What I say is hire four college kids at $50,000 a year, right? And follow that one kid around for one year, right? You got four jobs and you still save $20,000, right? And so we, we really need to start thinking outside the box in terms of how we use government funding and what is the, what is the goal of government funding. Um, we have to get away from this strong law enforcement philosophy in the United States, get away from this philosophy of locking people up, and, and even transition police departments from the idea that our job is to arrest people. Because we get stats and we get promotions based on arresting people, um, and not so much on driving down crime. You see, we are driving down crime though. In Suffolk County, we're driving down crime at historic lows. Um, especially in most of the, those um, most important neighborhoods. How do they do it? You have Town of Babylon, you have County Executive Steve Below putting funding in resource centers in every one of these neighborhoods. You have empowering youth centers and giving youth centers funding, right? And then within those resource centers, right, you fund th things like CODA through the Gun Involved Violence Grant from the governor's office, right? We, we have outreach workers. We have uh, Julius Nicholson, raise your hand, Julius, who's the outreach worker supervisor. We have Carlos Jennings here, who is one of the outreach workers. You have um, Terry Morris, who works for us as an administrative assistant. And then we have all these people in all the resource centers, right? And then what we do is we're knocking on the doors of young people who are criminally involved, right? We, we needed funding for that, right? Yeah. It's not that expensive, right? You, you, you hire an outreach worker for $50,000, $40,000 or something, eventually full time, right? Um, hire four outreach workers, save hundreds of kids, versus spending 200000 and send them upstate. You know, you really, we just, what we're doing doesn't make sense. And it's only because, um, because the people that you're locking up primarily don't look like the people deciding where the money goes. Uh, and we've got to watch where the money's going. We've got to do a better job at it. Um, you know, and, and that's basically it. Got, you, as people who are voters, you need to know where your money, money's going, who's deciding where the money goes, and what is their mental state of relation to the neighborhoods that really need the resources? We're not talking about a lot of money. Cody is not very expensive. I think our total budget right now, right now is about um, $168,000. Uh, for the total budget, we have to hire about six <coughs> people. If we expanded that outward, imagine the crime we can drop. We have a 10% recidivism rate. Only 10% of the people in Cody go back to jail. All right, that's two outreach workers and a case manager running the room, the weekly meetings. 10% recidivism rate, the state rate is 44%, the national rate is 68%, right? For three people, that's what you can do in a, in a neighborhood. With, with the gun violence reduction, with the punishment, with the police department and outreach workers working, right? And then you have a 69% employment rate we have. 69% of people going back to school and college and, and working in their communities. 
And so what we're doing just doesn't make any sense. It's all about where are you putting that money. So it's good that we're here at this legislative caucus and <coughs> spread the word about CODA. So the <laughs> commissioner makes a good point about the policy implementation. Then 